Let's see. Trying to learn something. Let me get lit up with them. Let me get them. Trying to learn something. Come on in the room. Light my sage. Grand rising, grand rising. Give it a few minutes, few seconds. This is not my normal time. <clears throat> few seconds. Grand rising. I'll show Grand Rising, Grand Rising, everyone coming in. Whew. It's like for a second, it was like, mm mm, mm mm, that's too much energy. Let me get my frankincense popping. I say it's the weekend. Ooh, it's the 3rd of August. We are like officially in Leo season. Uh, Yes, I'm super excited about that all together. Um, this is a time frame that is so many amazing things. And I know I'm not saying this because I'm biased. This is a very powerful transformational month. Um, it's a very, uh, it's a lot of energy portals starting this month off. So you got to think we came out of Mercury retrograde. Well, on the 31st going into the first, right? Came out of Mercury retrograde. There were some portals that were closing and there were some new ones opening up. There was a transition in energy just with that alone. Jupiter goes out of retrograde on August 11th during this month. We also had the Lions Gate portal that opens up. Well, it already opened up on the 26th or the 28th, if I'm not mistaken. And it doesn't close up until like uh, mid of part of August, a little after mid early August. So, when I say that this Leo season is about to be crazy, it's a lot, it's a lot of energy. We came in with the black moon on top of that. We came in with the black moon. That's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so, let's see. And it's the shift of all the eclipse moons. So, it was a certain type of eclipse moons that were popping off last, the earlier part of the year. And now we are in a different part. I say, ooh, ooh, ooh. These cards are about to be real interesting. <laughs> These cards, let's, let's do roomy. Y'all want to do roomy today? No. Yeah. Grand Rising. Everyone coming in. Uh -oh. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna take both of y'all. Try flicking out the bed. Let's see what's on the bottom. Enter the garden of delight on the bottom of the deck. Thank you. We used to sell these at my store. Used to sell them at my store. I think I'm gonna get back into like doing some denim for my clothing page. Kinda. It hasn't been really my clothing page lately, but 
we've been talking about. We in the we in talks. We in the talks about doing a couple of things. They're trying to get me back in that a little bit, a little something. Let's see what the soul journey card. Oh, I got some stuff I want to touch on, but I'm gonna get through this reading first so I don't get distracted. Who? Uh, uh, uh. There's some cards I be wanting to put back. Not even for y'all, just for me. But like, I don't want that message. <laughs> you said, please do. You need one. Yeah, we're thinking about it. <clears throat> we thinking about it. Doing maybe like a um, collection. Um, let me see. What's there at the bottom of the deck? Grand Rising. Hold on, y'all. I want to make sure what's in the bottom of the deck for these. Okay. Mm. I think that's enough to start with. Let's let's get this this going. It's a lot. It's a lot going on over here. The first card that came out for today. This is today's energy of what we should be focused on. Those things that we need to be mindful of. Um, it's the freedom card. So the freedom card is all about how are we, um, and it's in the past position. How are we being liberated from our past? How are we focusing on um, things that um, give us power, that give us strength, that have encouraged us, that has built into us from our past in particular? How are we using those tools? Hold on, y'all. Sometimes I feel like I need to get off Wi-Fi. Okay. So how are we using these tools to build into who we are? And, to, and when I say who we are, the true us, the essence of us, the authentic us. All right? Because in order for you to be free, who do you have to be? Your authentic self. You have to be your authentic self without even thinking. Without no labels, no validations, no ego. In order for you to be truly free, you got to be real authentic to who you are. Without all the dynamics and knowing who that is. And it takes us really understanding what did our past come to teach us? What did our past come to teach us? What did our lessons from the past come to teach us in particular? Now that we have these lessons and we have these tools and now um, some of us are, are, are more understanding of our purpose and our journey and how we operate in our own sense of freedom, we come up with the seer card and the seer card is all about navigating from your higher perspective. How am I using all of these dynamics that have built me into the woman or man that I am today? And then I use my higher perspective. How am I navigating how am I using these things and my freedom to navigate from a higher dimension? The seer card don't come out a lot, y'all. The seer card comes out when there is a, a intense energy, when it is dealing with um, psychic abilities, things that are from a higher consciousness. That's what the seer card is all about. How are we using our higher self, our higher consciousness, okay? The most intuitive energy in us. To navigate our situations. This is a time to trust your divine feminine. This is a time to trust all of that energy. And how it is pushing us into our future. Grand rising, grand rising everybody. Peace Chaz. Alright. So. Us understanding what this means. Us being liberated from any ideology. From any validations any connections, attachments, okay? Operating in true sense of freedom gives us the ability to navigate in these other dimensions, other consciousness. That's good, Chaz. Being on the fast is good, <laughs> okay? So as we're navigating these these other dimensions because now we have our own sense of freedom. Now we are more authentically who we are. Now we are more attached. If we're attached to anything, we're more, and I only want to use the words attached. We are connected to our true sense of purpose. Now we can see things differently. 
And because we're seeing things differently, it's really important for us to let go. A lot of times we are, are taught so many different habits that we don't realize we're repeating. We're taught um, so many different ways to live. We're taught so many different dynamics. And we're taught this and we, we carry these patterns and these routines out and don't even realize we're doing the same thing that our parents did, our grandparents did, other society members did, whatever the case, whoever you are influenced by. This is a moment that in order for us to really do this, you can't control this. You can't, you can't force it. You have to be in a space that you are very fluid. In order for you to bring in the things that are truly going to serve your heart's desire and your purpose, you have to be very fluid. Allow the universe to do what it does. Trust that it's going to align things the way it's supposed to align. You might not see it. It might not be on your radar, I say. It might not be on your radar at this moment. Okay? It might not be on your radar at this moment. But you have to trust that it's coming. And that everything is intentional. And that every moment is divine. Sometimes we be so caught up in controlling what the outcome looks like and controlling what we think is supposed to be, how we think we're supposed to live, how we think our life is supposed to turn out instead of being connected to our freedom. <laughs> and our freedom is who? Our authentic self. Our freedom is who? Our God self. Okay? So, it's funny because the bottom of the deck is trust the process. You have to trust the process. It might feel like it's making you crazy. <laughs> you might not understand what's getting ready to be on the other side of this. Oh, you might not understand. Sometimes you might even feel like you're repeating the same damn cycle. You're like, ah, dang, I think I just went through that. Hey, I just did the same thing. I'm repeating a cycle. I'm, I'm, this is a pattern. <laughs> but you got to know that the universe is sitting there with their foot on your neck for a reason. And you got to trust that they know that maybe they creating this, this whirlwind in your life for a reason. Maybe they decided to take your whole house and dump it upside down for a reason. I always say when you feel like you're going through that moment when they just take the house and then shake it and try to see what I feel like, I swear I'll be feeling like the spirit guys be like, let's just flip this shit upside down and just shake it and see what come out. I promise you, when you're going through, that's the moment where you know it's about to be some real change, some real transformation popping. Okay? Some real change and real transformation. And because of that real change and real transformation that comes blessings, Quit looking at it as, as um, chaos and confusion. Quit putting a negative spin on it. Understand how to put this in the right perspective. This is about perspective. How am I seeing this? Am I seeing this from my higher self? Am I seeing this from my higher self, my intuitive self, my, my higher consciousness? Or am I seeing this from the lower level? Am I seeing this from a space that I want to control it? That I want to hold on to it? That I want to just, you know, make sure that I'm the one that's that's navigating this. Instead of working with the universe. Do you are meant, listen, you're supposed to be here working with everything that's going on. You ain't got to control it. Because sometimes y'all don't even know what you want. You don't even know what you want. Y'all be talking about, yeah, I know what I want. No, you don't. You really don't. You think you know. <laughs> you never know. You think you know. All right. I think I want to save this one. So the loneliness card is coming out in our soul journey. <laughs> so the loneliness card is coming out in our soul journey. I say. And it says, I know that I am never alone. So the loneliness card is all about having to take this time. Sometimes 
you have to take this time to walk away from everything. And it's crazy because I pulled this card before in my own personal reading. And I remember I was like, uh-uh, take that card back. I just was, I was just by myself. Don't nobody want to be by themselves. <laughs> Look, sometimes you have to walk away because there's something that you're not catching. There's a divine message that you're missing. Sometimes you have to do these like King, King Chaz just did, a social media detox. I, I recommend that for a lot of people. Okay. Sometimes you have to be in a space where you're doing these um, fasting and moments of solitude. And now when I say fasting, I'm talking about fasting from everything. That's social media, TV, family, friends. Okay, so sometimes you got to do that. Why? So you can get what's meant for you. Sometimes you got to get in a space of stillness. And the people who's supposed to be there on the other side is going to be there. That space of stillness is so important. Peace, beloveds, everyone is coming in. Greetings. That space of stillness is so important because this is when you are able to not only hear your higher self, but you are able to hear your guides that are helping you align your steps. Yes, 157 said the desert. I used to call it the woodshed. I think I got that from my ex-husband. He used to always be like, you got to go in the woodshed sometimes. Sometimes you got to separate from everybody. You got to go in hermit mode. See, all of us got that, 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 that word. You got to go in hermit mode sometimes. And you can't be worried about that I feel lonely. Lonely and loneliness is two, two. It's different things. <sighs> These are two different things. And you should never feel lonely because your spirit guides and your ancestors is always with you. Always. Trust and believe. You are never by yourself. All right. So for our transformation, this is a moment of getting rest. And this is not about getting rest like, oh, you got to go get some sleep. No, this is a moment of, look, this is when you know they hard on your ass right now. That get rest is about just taking a moment to be still. I actually want to... It's taking a moment. It's saying, I'm not telling you that you got to go to sleep or you need more. No, this is a moment for you to sit back and get still. Be more about your self-care. Be more about intentional about what it is that you need to do when it comes to these dynamics. Because there is a call for us to be still. I just told y'all the month of August is about to be popping. <laughs> this month about to be popping. So because it's about to be the energy that it is, that means that you have to kind of pull up step back and say let me recharge let me regroup let me get these divine messages that i need to get so i know how i can work with the universe in creating this life and being more connected to my purpose and being more in alignment with my higher self and we hate so today is a wonderful day for you to just meditate Today is a wonderful day for you to just go connect with nature. Today is a wonderful day just for you to process some things. Just be still. No, you ain't got to go do that. Quit committing to all these people. Don't damn, somebody call you and want you to do something, tell them no. Mm -mm. Child, I can't do it. Make up a reason if you got to. I don't know. I don't be having no issue saying no. Mm-mm. I don't be having no issues. The old me used to be like, oh, the, mm -mm. this one right here. My phone broke. <laughs> my phone is broke. Ooh. So the cards that I pulled out of our roomy deck is Sacred Soul Sister. Sacred Soul Sister. And blessings of Zara. Blessings of Zara. Okay. Let's see what they talk about. It's 39 and 37. And then the bottom of the deck, they was wanting to tell us a lot today. Is, I don't know if y'all can see that. It's number 28. And it says, enter the garden of delight. Interesting. Let's start with 37. Let's see what it's talking about real quick
I'm good for skipping over some of this stuff. Sometimes I'll be feeling like I need to just post this at the end. Okay, I love this part. So we're just going to skip all the way to this. Ooh, it's a lot. <laughs> the oracle reason. That's funny. I just said this. Your sacred soul sister is your partner in consciousness. Make no mistake, she is you. She is just a part of you that is so great, you cannot always see her from your conscious mind. Who does that sound like? The seer. <laughs> it is sort of like the eye of the dog trying to see its whole self, which is a bit tricky. Whereas it moves to see its rear, so the rear is moved along too. So rather than through the direct perception, the sacred soul sister is met through reflection. She can be received in those moments of rest <laughs> where great ideals are born. She is a genius. You see vastly creative and inspired. Her worlds are those we access in sleep and meditation or absorbing engagement and activity where the mind can relax and drop into realities far more vast than those of daily life and be replenished. Ah, Shay, they better come through. So then it says this oracle comes with a particular guidance also. You know something deep in your bones without knowing how or why or without particular reason. You just know. It doesn't make sense, but you just know. It may be joy that you know. It may be that you know to avoid a certain situation. It may be that something is going to work out beautifully, despite its appearance or contrary to a particular moment. It may be that you are meant to take a certain path, but you just know. It comes as confirmation that knowing, mysterious as it is, your sacred soul sister is talking through you. Trust it and act or not accordingly. So act accordingly is what I would say. They talking about you can, the choice is yours and I get what they say in free will. But trust your intuition. This is this card all day. So the sacred soul sister is really you. This is the reflection of you. It's the reflection of your higher self. And the only way that we, according to this, that we access that energy, the only way that we tap into that energy of the sacred soul sister is what? Through meditation, through self-reflection, through moments of rest, which comes back up to where my, my rest card, get some rest. In moments of stillness, when you are doing things that are going to help you connect to your consciousness for a reason, because this is where ideals are born. This is where your dreams are born. This is where ingenuity is born. When you are able to be still. So being still is so important and, and, and encouraging. So we can learn how to trust our higher self, our higher consciousness, listen, and then act upon it. So the second card was the Zarya card, the blessings of Zarya. Oh, let me look. Let me see where I need to skip to. This oracle comes with special guidance for you. You are being given a blessing of Zaria, of radiance, of brightness. This blessing has a purpose. It is clear out that which one, wait a minute, it's clear out that which would, I need to get my glasses, obstruct your full <laughs> unfoldment to the support the divine jewel of your soul in shining. You are being given an opportunity supported by life, by the earth, by the grace of the divine beloved. She sheds toxins from your being. These may be physical and they may be equally emotional, psychic, psychological origins. They may even come from this one lifetime way before you were even born. You may understand consciously what is being released or you may not. If you are sensitive, you may feel the symptoms of detoxification at a physical level. Mm, I say, even if what you are releasing is emotional or psychological in nature. You are encouraged to complete the sacred honoring ritual to stay adequately hydrated and to be moderate rather than excessive in your approach. Give your body and mind time to rest. 
time to replenish so that the blessings can be fully received. This oracle is bringing you a message that if something appears to be leaving your life, even something painful, release it. Quit trying to force it. It is because it is no longer healthy for you or no longer supporting your life that you are in at this moment. There is something more loving and beautiful awaiting for you. Do not try to feast upon the scraps. Stop scraping up the dirt <laughs> for stale bread crumbs. crumbs. Rise up and move towards the seat and heavenly table gleaming before you for a greater feast awaits your attendance. Listen, both of these cards just kind of basically told us to go sit our ass down, let get still, <laughs> get still in yourself so you can hear clearly what it is that you need it. So you can hear that guidance that can trust that sense of knowing of what direction you're supposed to be going in. So you can stop wanting to hold on to the stuff that they ain't even serving you no more. I just told y'all that we going through how many retrogrades? I was just talking about that yesterday. When the universe is turning your life upside down and shaking the hell out of it and just seeing what falls out, you need to trust that what falls out ain't for you. That you can't take that. The universe will definitely go at, at and pop your hand. Listen. And you got to be okay with that. Be okay with that. Be okay with that they are making sure that anything that's moving with you in this higher realm, in this perspective, because you are using what your higher consciousness, you are connected to who your higher self is supposed to be there. And sometimes that means that you're going to be standing by yourself in the physical realm. But it's okay for you to be standing by yourself. Because you got to, got to, y'all got to get to that space where you know and understand that your spirit guides and your ancestors is going to always have your back. Your squad is always going to be with you. And they're going to usher in who your real soul tribe is. Okay? They're going to usher in your soul family every day. You're going to run across people who are your AL likes all the time, specifically when you are operating in the energy that you're supposed to and you trust in that. A lot of times we don't trust it. A lot of times we are being very hard-headed and not listening. <laughs> the uh, we, I don't even know what this is. We're going to call it the D-Stone. The D-Stone says, do you realize that you have a sacred heart? That word sacred being used a whole lot. Um, do you believe in the healing power of pure love? Imagine that your heart center is glowing with your true spiritual nature, love. You are able to dissolve illusions of illness and emotional challenges. Your presence as a healing effect on effects on everyone you encounter. Okay. Your presence is healing. I don't know why that's blurry right now. Mother Teresa is the saint on the back of the card. That's interesting. All thoughts, words, and actions that come through me, flow through me, and my heart center. I freely share my abundance and the fruits of my labors with those in need. I am a natural conduit of healing, love, and well-being. I am a calming presence. I say, I'm a calming presence. So, be like Mother Teresa today. <laughs> Be calm, be still, be connected to your higher self, be connected to your authentic self, um, be connected to your, I love this, sacred soul sister. Be connected to your sacred soul sister. Who is that? That she is you. Okay. Or soul brother, sacred soul. It don't sound the same, but y'all know what I mean. Okay. That person is you. That is your higher self. That is your your truest self. Your most divine self. The divine self that walks in love and the spirit and the element of love. So when that person shows up freely, free from all the attachments, labels, validations, authentically who you are, that's when the real, as they say, miracles work it's funny because i wasn't even thinking about it but the bottom of the deck of the transformation card was leaving and leaving is about things <clears throat> you leaving situations that are toxic or things that are toxic leaving you and we 
talked about that with that Zaria card. Okay. It's funny because this morning, um, every morning and every night, I, I read for Mastery of Love. The Mastery of Love. And um, I typically now just thumb through. And the thing that it, it touched on today, or the part that I read today, was about uh, how we tend to uh, be delusional. I'm going to use that word. It wasn't a specific word. We're delusional. We come into these relationships with people, and it could be intimate relationships. It could be um, personal relationships. But we come and in, get into these relationships with people, and it's almost like we are wanting them to be something else. And the, the topic that it, he used in the book, which had me laughing, was... You were a dog lover. You were a dog lover, but you keep buying cats, trying to make the cat be a dog instead of just getting a dog. That don't make sense. That's insanity, basically, right? And I was laughing because it's like, I see people do this all the time. We get into relationships or we get into these friendships, wanting these people to be something that they are not. Hoping and, and wanting to shift them into and mold them and getting frustrated when they are not who we want them to be. And most of the time, we don't want them because we don't want ourselves. Let's be clear. We don't even know who we are. We don't know what we want. So now we just on this damn aimless, headless mission. <laughs> And then get frustrated or mad or have all of this anger and resentment and bitterness built up because the relationship went south. Right, 157, like all relationships. That's why I said, oh, this is all relationships. See people for who they really are. And if you cannot accept them where at the level that they are on and where they are at, then stop. Don't, you ain't, you do have free will. You don't have to, like, I stay like if somebody, I swear, whoo, if you are blatantly not in alignment with who I am, I will not entertain you at all. I will be cordial. I will be nice. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you love and light, that type of energy. But if you are not in alignment and I feel like you are going to cause friction, chaos, and confusion in my life. What I look like hanging out with you and not to knock any of y'all who smoke and drink and go to the club, okay? Because that was a part of my lifestyle at one point in the time too. But what do I look like if that's what your lifestyle is at this moment? If your lifestyle is in straight contradiction to who I am and what it is that I am evolving to be, I can't, I, I can't hang with you. Because now I'm putting myself in a toxic environment. That is not serving who I am. Now I'm opening myself up to chaos and confusion when I already see who you are. And you might have be one of them type of people because I don't I remember when I was younger, and I'm not saying that all of y'all gotta do this, but I remember when I was younger, I would justify because I would see that that little bit of potential. We might get in a conversation, I'd be like, oh, you smart as hell. But their lifestyle don't reflect that they were smart as hell. They could regurgitate some information because they are very well read, but they weren't applying the information to their life. So for me, it would still be like, well, I mean, I have great conversation with this person. <laughs> there's a there's a connection. And I'm talking about this is all type of relationships. There's a connection, but your lifestyle is in straight contradiction to who I am and what it is that I say that I want to evolve to be. So you got to be in a space, y'all, where y'all are starting to take off these damn veils and these rose colored glasses and look at people for who they really are at this moment. And if you cannot accept them at this moment, if you can't be celebrate who they are at this moment whether they evolve and raise in their vibration or if they stay still. If you can't celebrate who they are at this moment, they're not supposed to be around you. 
They ain't supposed. They can't rock with you. You can't. I, mm -mm. You can't. You can't be in my tribe. <laughs> you can't be in my tribe. They supposed to either encourage you or write, help raise you up. Those are the people that you should be around. People that are going to encourage who you are and make sure that they are pushing you to your greatness or they are going to rise you up. They're going to raise your vibration. You should always feel that anybody that you come around, I automatically feel like you are raising my vibration. Anytime that you are getting into a space of resistance, you are doing yourself a disservice. Now, let's be clear. Some people do go through stuff, okay? Okay. Cause I have friends that I've been friends with for a long time and that, that don't really mean that, but I have friends who I've been friends with for a long time and they might hit that pocket where the universe has got their foot on their neck. <laughs> and sometimes you just have, when their foot is on the neck, you can be there in a supporting way from a distance. Don't feel like you have to engage or pull yourself into the whirlwind or be overly worried and concerned because I know a lot of y'all are like me. We're nurturers and we're protectors and we are fixers and all of this shit. No, that's not your shit. You got your own purpose. You got your own journey you're supposed to be over here focused on. Stop it. Quit picking up other people's baggage. You is not the baggage person. You is not baggage claim. You are not baggage claim. Put that bag down. <laughs> but what you can do is send them loving energy. You can send them healing vibrations. You know, light a candle for them. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay. I'm good for like sending some people some videos. If I know you're going through something, I'm good. I'm quick for sending you like something inspirational or something that is going to like, you might want to read this book. Okay. You might want to check this out. Oh, you might look at doing this. I had a friend that I was trying to bring to the sister circle that we just had. Cause she going through the universe is turning her life upside down. But sometimes we are hard headed and when the universe decide to turn our life upside down and you not catching a lesson, guess what they going to do? They going to keep that bad boy flipped over. They're like, oh, I, we not turning this right side up until you get this damn lesson. We not taking our foot off your neck until you get this lesson. You being real resistant. Let me show you how that's going to work out for you until you figure it out. <laughs> And you got to be, uh, actually, Kiki said, um, some of them don't even look at the message when we're trying to help. It's okay. You did your part. It's okay. A lot. You got to release the, the need to control. You got to release the need to feel like you got to do more than what you are supposed to do. This is about your journey. And a lot of times, and it might sound like, for real, y'all might feel like this sounds selfish as hell, but it's... Um, a bigger picture involved. A lot of times we are so caught up and wrapped up in things that are outside of our own uh, dynamic, our own journey. So a lot of times we are caught up and wrapped in an energy that is outside of our own journey. And our own purpose. And that's a distraction. Okay? It's a distraction. Because you're supposed to be intentional to your lessons. Intentional to why did I come here? What am I supposed to be doing? Because if I am working on my own self-love, my own salvation, in return, what do I get? I heal the community. I do. I heal, I heal you by healing me. Okay, I heal you by healing me. If I'm not focused on my own healing, I'm not focused on my own salvation. Guess what? I'm doing you a disservice because you seeing me over here being dysfunctional as shit. But I'm over here trying to send you a book to read. I'm like, oh, here, sister, go ahead and read Sacred Woman. My life over here in shambles. The hell? What kind of foolishness is this? 
<laughs> Listen, it starts here. If I'm truly operating in what I'm supposed to be doing for myself and how I'm supposed to be healing myself, how I am consistently pouring love into myself. And that's what all your relationships, intimate relationships, you cannot be the person that you need to be for anyone else, whether it's your children, your mate, your parents, whatever. You cannot be the person you need to be if you are not showing up for yourself. I just had a conversation where, and I always have this conversation with certain people. I'd be like, okay, y'all do realize if you are not operating in your own self-love, how can you truly love someone else? And we got to understand what does that word mean? <laughs> okay, what does that word mean? A lot of times we throw that word around so loosely thinking, oh yeah, I love myself. It sound cute. But do your life reflect your self-love? Are your actions saying that you really love yourself? Let's keep it all the way real. Like, are you really making every choice in the day and saying, is this an act of self-love? When you decide to pick up that soda, like my grandma say, that soda pop. <laughs> when you decide to pick up that soda pop, is that an act of self-love? When you decide to put chemicals and toxins in your body, is that an act of self-love? When you decide to be in a toxic environment that you know it don't have no, like it is nowhere part of your new journey. For some of y'all who are new to this journey. Is that an act of self-love? And that's an amazing part, um, goddess of light. You say, I'm learning to love myself. That is the most important journey of it all. People always tell me like, <laughs> like, what, what do I need to do? How do I, I, I want to learn how to, I'm, this is new. This is a new journey for me. What book do you suggest? Uh, uh, yourself, the book of self. <laughs> learn to know who you are, your triggers, the things that, make you who you are, the things that make you um, maybe pop off, the things that make you embrace your greatness. That book itself is the most important book of all. All them other books is just, you know, they, they just add-ons. But learning to operate and learn and know how to love yourself, that's the most valuable lesson that you can learn throughout this whole journey. If you don't do shit else, when you know how to operate in your own self-love, and this is a, a long going, everlasting <laughs> journey. Cause sometimes we get distracted and then realize that, oh, wait a minute, I'm not acting in my own self-love. Did I just do what I just think I did? Was that a choice or a decision that was made out of, out of self-love? But you don't have to beat yourself up about it. You just forgive yourself, realize that you did some old F girl or F boy stuff, and then get back in your in alignment, get back in formation. Be like, mm, okay, I got it. <laughs> I was having a moment. I was having a moment. Let me let me get back in line. The biggest part of this journey is going to be self love. Knowing about your chakras, that's good. That's cute. You know, it's great to know how your vortexes is going. It's great to know when they out of alignment. All right. It's great to understand how you can operate in your healing by that information. But the key is your self-love. Everything you need to know and how you need to heal yourself and how you need to operate is already in you. You don't need no guidebooks. You don't need none of that. It helps us, but it's already there. So now it's about, let me heal. Let me pay attention. Let me, let me, let me be real with myself. Let me do this mirror work. Let me stop lying to myself. That's the first thing. Stop lying to yourself. When you start living in truth, and you know you can hold your hand up on all the, the, the crazy shit, 
<laughs> when you start acknowledging like, ooh, hmm, yeah, that's me. Let me fix it. That's where the shift and the change really start happening. When you start living in your own personal truth, that's when the real work begins. So, goddess of light, you are in a beautiful space right now. Beautiful space. Don't get distracted. It's the most important part of your journey. Mm-hmm. It's the most important part of your, your personal journey, all right? All right, let me get off of here. It's about to cut me off anyway. <laughs> um, Hold on. Somebody had put a question. Oh, you was trying to get a read. I ain't doing readings today. I ain't doing no more readings until... Hmm, probably whenever our full moon or maybe around the time... Probably around my birthday. I might do some readings around my birthday because the Jupiter come out of retrograde. So I'll probably do some readings around then. All right. All right. I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. I will that y'all have an amazing day. Y'all already saw the reading say get some rest, meditate, you know, do some things that are going to be connected to how um, you are operating in your higher self. How are you being connected to your, your higher self, your, your God self, your soul. What is it? Sacred soul sister. Thank you, beloved. I know they got me. I know you goon got me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll shay. I'll shay. All right. Talk to you later. Peace, beloved.